Welcome, I am your host, Ramonda Jan, the founder of Women Thrive Media, visibility expert and inspirational speaker. I founded this global community for women, so every woman who is starting or running a business can feel like she has found a place to belong. So every woman is empowered to use her voice and share her message with the world. Hi, and welcome to today's podcast episode. Today, I have a very special guest for you, Helen Ferguson. Hi, Helen. Good to see you on our podcast today. Hello, Raymonda. It's fabulous to be here. Thank you for thank you for thank you for inviting me on. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's great to have you here. Today we have a very special conversation and perhaps not the easiest one to have. But today we're talking about rediscovering your true self after trauma. If you have ever experienced trauma, maybe you have gone through some things in your life that has caused you to really look at yourself and the situation. And today we'll be talking about how to really discover yourself after particular trauma. Helen Ferguson is a specialist trauma therapist, has been clinical expert in childhood trauma, CPTSD, and sexual abuse recovery for over 24 years. A psychotherapist and expert in trauma healing, Helen guides entrepreneurial businesswomen to emotional and psychological freedom from trauma holding them back, from embodying their true selves in their business, relationships, and life. Helen, pleasure to have you here today. Oh, it's wonderful to be here and, and be able to share um, inspiration and, and motivation and hope, actually, for anybody who's listening, who who this resonates for. Um, so it's it's great to be here. Thank you. Yeah. On my journey, an entrepreneurial journey, and through the summit that we host on an annual basis, I meet a lot of women who've been through different types of trauma and whether they're aware or not, it affects them on conscious and sometimes subconscious levels. So hopefully today's conversation will really go a little bit deeper into what is trauma? How do we recognize it? How does it actually affect our lives? And what can we do about it? So Helen, before we begin, I wanna hear a little bit more. You've been doing this work for 24 years. That's a very long time, but I just want to get to know who's Helen behind the work that you do. I, it, do you know when every time I say 24 years it kind of you know I, I kind of go really am I that old now am I that old that it's 24 years um but no behind all of that I mean I you know I kind of you know when I first started out and and when I first uh, became a therapist in fact I start I actually started out as a psychiatric nurse that's what I went to you know originally went to university for um but then when I qualified and I started working with children and and worked in assessing um, children's mental health, um, I remember being with a psychotherapist who was my supervisor, and she said, "You need to be a therapist." <laughs> she, you know, she said, "Your energy, the way that you, the ease that you have with people, um, the understanding, the analytical kind of understanding, you know, seeing beyond the the actual kind of what I see in front of me." Um, and and I've always had that that mind that curiosity. I, I I remember as a child being being that and very imaginative and creative with my mind. Less so with my with a, with anything else. I'm not particularly kind of artistic or um, you know a creative in you know I don't make pottery or anything like that. But what I'm great with, what I've always been kind of really really inspired by, is the way that my mind works. This really creative and imaginative way that I'm I have this <laughs> here we go this is something to share so I have my, my inner my inner child that I talk about the playful one of me is I actually call her Dora the Explorer because she's exactly that I kind of had this mental rucksack and I'm exploring and I'm curious and I'm and nothing nothing particularly kind of scares me or worries me and it's you know, it's kind of a, it's an, for me, it's a really enlightening way of being, but equally it's, it is that for other people when they're with me, because they're like, you know, Helen's here, it's okay, we're calm, <laughs> you know, um, and I am that, and I, you know, I, I was, I, I was doing a piece of work this morning for myself on kind of my business and understanding myself in my business as I go through um, a whole new phase in my business, um, 
that was looking at kind of my soul my soul values not just my my not just you know kind of my business values but kind of my soul values what are they and they are about being calm and ease and flow and compassion and connection and I can't I feel as though I've always had that you know in spite of the experiences that I've had which have been traumatic um you know and and you know, between the ages of 16 and, and 24, 25, um, you know, three successive abusive relationships, which which distanced me from myself, um, because I remember that child that, I mean, I, I used to, I always was convinced I was going to live in a, a tree house, because I was all playing with the tree house. Literally, I was convinced. Um, I'm really, really sad it hasn't happened yet, but I've <laughs> I've got life to go so you never know I could end up still there don't lose hope Helen <laughs> the tree house is there it's on my vision board um you know, and you know I, I was convinced as a child that I was going to be I was, I was going to live in a tree house and I was going to you know and it, it links in with one of my favorite books which is the faraway tree um by Enid Blyton and I reread that I reread that book because I always want to connect with that part of me that is God, that Dora the Explorer, exploratory, creative, and and curious about the world and and everything in it. Um, but unfortunately, because of the experiences that I had, I I was distanced from her, and and had to survive those experiences, which then, of course, impacted on my ability to to remind myself that there was this this curious and playful and and compassionate and calm and ease and flow to me um because actually what I was doing most of the time in that time frame was just that you know tight survival you know with, with was just my whole body and mind was full of stress and I never thought that I would end up as a therapist I I actually <laughs> I actually was thought I was going to be in in hotel management. That was a, that was kind of a thing that I I don't know how. I think it was just one of those weird moments. Um, and but knew instinctively actually once I'd kind of thought that through a bit that you know I I needed to be giving to people and and that's that's in, that's such an important value of mine is being able to to give. Um, for no for no other reason that it provides freedom for other people yeah um, and that, I think that's just an, such an important part of who I am I remember when we first connected and you shared your story and I really got to know who you are uh, behind your work it really connected with me and I think this deep compassion that you hold for people and through your own experience that has been um pretty hard from age of 16 going through such a deep trauma to where you are today to have that calmness and compassion you know a lot of times trauma can harden us and I met women who have had these experiences who hard that harden them how were you able to go through your life experiences and sort of maintain the essence of who you are I think it I think there was a time that well not just think I know that there was a time that not necessarily that I was hard but that that it was it was the the ease of me was not allowed out um because I was having to pretend that things weren't happening um in order to in order to kind of get go to university and be around a group of people um, in order to be with my family and not and not let them know I, you know there was something about you know even though my family are great you know there was something about I can't I can't put upon them so I'm going to have to kind of pretend that I'm that this is not happening and of course when you pretend when you hide what happens is this other kind of persona can come through which people assume is then hard or angry or fierce and I'm, I actually describe myself as fierce now, but you can be compassionately fierce. Yeah. Um, and I'm strong and I'm empowered. That's I, I own the term fierce in terms of that. But, you know, a lot of people will look at you when you've experienced something or in the midst of you experiencing something 
that that makes them make a judgment about what who you are and that's what people did to me so for a short period of time people would say oh she's angry or you know she's she's um she's difficult to approach um which is completely i mean you know me Raymonda, that's completely kind of not who i am but i can see why they were thinking that when i look back at that that me at that time um that because i wasn't that you know i i had i had changed you know i wasn't that and so part of my shift if you like to reconnecting with me with dora the explorer the treehouse girl the 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 jumping in puddles the climbing trees you know for me to reconnect with her I needed to give myself the space to be able to forgive myself for feeling like everything was my fault. And so, you know, when you live with people, because it was three successive relationships, when you live, uh, you know, and, and I lived with two of them, I didn't live with the first one. Um, but when you live with people telling you and that you are a certain way and that you're not good enough as you are, that that you're not who you should be that if you were a bit thinner you'd be better if you were a bit quieter then you'd be a better person that you'd be better for them that that if you just kept quiet then if you just keep quiet I won't hit you you know those kind of things you know I I took ownership of those and that's what that hardened bit is. You take ownership. You it becomes a, a belief system, um, and so in that belief system, in that it be, you develop a self shame, um, and a toxic shame and a blame for for who you are as a human being. And when I started to shift out of that, the reason why I did was was a recognition when I when I first qualified and I was walking home from university with with this with the sense of I've achieved something for me despite of you know and this is for me and that recognition that I'd done something for me but it wasn't the me that was surviving it was the me that needed to continue to live and so that was the moment that kind of recognition that that time of you know, it wasn't just a five minute thing. It was, you know, that was a long walk home from the university um, where I where I used that pause. I stopped reacting because our reactions are an impulse and that's what survival is. It's an impulse. Um, but our response is, a, you know, is a choice. And so if you have a pause between the reaction and the response, you get to choose you. You get to choose what you want to achieve and what you want to do for yourself. So in that pause, that you know, recognizing I'd been surviving, giving myself a space for reflection and a space for for understanding and acknowledging what I was feeling and what had happened and and what I wasn't going to tolerate anymore, then I gave myself the choice to move forward and to then rediscover me, mm -hmm. and that's that's. A, that's a huge thing to do it wasn't overnight you know um but it's an essential part of of any kind of healing and recovery yeah so I want to ask you what is um how can we actually recognize trauma how can we become more aware whether we are in it and experiencing it and sometimes we let things go we let things slide for too long until we realize it has taken a certain effect on us and perhaps afterwards recognize that we have had trauma so that's a big question but whilst being in it I know it's really difficult to recognize that we are in this situation and then how do we recognize post a situation that maybe that there was a trauma and it's affecting us I've been saying this for a long time, <laughs> that trauma is unique to you. And so the experience that you have, so trauma is, it's really important to understand it, not as necessarily the event itself, but the impact and the experience of that event on you emotionally, 
physically, psychologically. Um, so when I, you know, so it impacts the mind, body, soul, um, and all your emotion, your, you know, your ability to emotionally feel balanced and physically feel well. So, you know, there are people that experience a traumatic e event that have an immediate kind of imbalance, but they're able to rebalance themselves and move on, okay, and move forward. So they're, they're still affected, but they're able to, to, to move and shift, um, move, you know, and, and recognize and acknowledge their emotional imbalance and respond to it. And that's, that's, a, that's an emotional resilience, um, an emotional and a psychological res resilience. And resilience, you know, just to add this bit, resilience in terms of trauma and in terms of uh, mental health actually isn't about kind of bouncing back. It's about that transformation through a difficult experience that means that you are then able to stand confidently in yourself and respond to, to other challenges. Um, but when you're, there are other people and quite a significant number of people that experience a, a, a traumatic event uh, or multiple traumatic events and are not able to bring a regulation back to themselves. So the trauma is the, is the emotional, the psychological, the, the physiological dysregulation of your whole system. It's on a cellular level mm -hmm. of your whole system that means that you feel that you have no control over yourself that you are disconnected from yourself and and actually start to feel disconnected from people the world you know the your what you normally enjoy um the things that you normally enjoy doing even your business your work that you feel this disconnection you feel that you're just about managing to get through um and then you you get through one experience and then you think wow i've got over that i'll have a sleep today um and then you think i'm okay again and then and then it, you're back on that hamster wheel so it's that complete dysregulation on a cellular level in every aspect of of your life of that event on your whole system um so that's why it's you know even as a psychotherapist you know people will often think that you know i'm i'm I'm, I'm just about talking therapy. I'm not, you know, I work somatically. I work with energy. I work with the physiology. I work with bioenergetics, you know, so, so, you know, whenever I'm, even with myself, I, I'm, I, as a therapist, I, I have my own therapy and it's really important for me. And that's about my energy level. So my energy balance and my emotional balance, because I absorb so much. Mm. So, you know, being able to recognize that you that that you are not feeling in control of yourself, that you are losing yourself, because that's what it is. It's a sense of loss of yourself, and and almost. I mean, a lot of my clients actually will describe it like, you know, they're trying to do things, but it's like grasping onto a cloud. You know, that's what it feels like. Like that's what they said. That's what my life feels like right now. And I, I'm doing the hand movement because they do it. But it's like I'm trying to grasp onto a cloud and I can't, I can't hold on to anything. So uh, it's, it's that, 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 that feeling. Um, there's, I find, you know, when I speak to women as well, and I find there are so many different ways that it affects us, as you say, the shame, the fear, the inability to be ourselves and find that connection to ourselves because we seem to live this, um, I don't know, not lie, but we seem to live this life that we have built to protect ourselves. How does one recognize that, okay, there is something not right? And sometimes there is a way of us dealing with trauma, which is almost putting, locking it away in a certain compartment of our brain and moving on because that's the only way for us to move on with life. But there are effects of trauma onto us. So how do we actually deal with that part? You have to acknowledge them first. You can't deal with anything until you acknowledge and notice it. And, and when you start to acknowledge and notice it, it's not about necessarily finding the right words because you can't always find the right word 
for your emotion, you know. Um, you will you will feel your emotion in your body before you're able to explain what it is. Yeah. So you 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 know listening truly listening to yourself. And I was I there's a little bit of an analogy that I use around you know if you try and store things away, think about it as you know putting putting an apple in a cupboard and thinking I'll come back to that apple later. I'll come back. I can't face it yet. I'll come back to that apple later. And you know the apple's there. So this is, you know, you said about people locking away. That, you know, you put the, think about it. It's your apple. It's in the, it's in the cup. You know it's there. There's, there's, in your peripheral vision, in your peripheral knowledge, you know it's there. But you're stopping yourself from looking at it. Then you start to think, I really should get that apple out of that cupboard really should do something about that apple but then the fear sets in about how bad's that apple going to be now because it's been in that cupboard and it's been a you know it's been allowed to kind of do what you know is it bruised now is it is it how rotten is it so that then stops you from trying to do anything about it because you're thinking it's just going to it's 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 going to be worse than it was when I put the apple in the cupboard, the apple, you know, it was a, perhaps a bit bruised and, you know, it had holes in it when I put it in the cupboard, but now what's it going to look like? So that fear then stops you from being able to go into your, into your mind um, to get the, the, the apple out, to be able to look at it. But what you, what you start to feel is the impact of knowing that that apple's there, that it's, that it's rotting away in that cupboard and you know that you've got to do something about it but you start to feel I can't I don't think I can do that so your stress levels your anxiety levels so everything then starts to shift and the brain will say yeah we can't open that cupboard don't open the cupboard because it's going to be really really bad you know so whenever I say to people you know whenever people ask me well where do we start we start by having to open the cupboard <clears throat> and that's that's not necessarily about diving into the past you don't need I don't take anybody back to their past you know I don't take anybody we don't go and relive the experience we don't you know we don't have to do that I have to know what's happened to to people to know to know then what are some of the other areas that I want to bring into working with them um because I, I you know have quite a number of skills but um you know the acknowledgement that the apple's there <laughs> that it needs to we need to open we need to open the cupboard door yeah um, and 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 actually what people say to me you know so that that initial kind of opening of the door is is the most fearful the most it will be the most fearful because it's well what what's going to be there but we don't know what's going to be there what we know is that there are feelings that there are emotions that there are ways that you've been surviving that there are what people call self-sabotaging behaviors, I actually call them protective behaviors. Um, so things that, you know, are self-harm, they are protective. They're trying to protect you. They're, they're paradoxically, you know, they're not protecting in the sense of safety, yeah. but they are trying to do something to, to help you manage the, the really difficult, um, the, the, the experience that you've had and the impact of that experience. Um, so when you start to acknowledge the apple, when you start to understand the impact of that apple on you and the impact of that trauma experience on you, you begin to empower yourself to choose to do things differently. And that is the part, that's the start of any healing. That's so powerful because, you know, I know it's so hard once it's been there for so long and sometimes we feel like I've forgotten about it for a moment but at a most pivotal moment when you're trying to do something or maybe it's a celebration or you're moving to that next level whether in your career or your business all of a sudden that trigger mm -hmm. comes up and it's like hey but I'm still here and yeah. the pain comes back to surface it does and I work with, I mean, you know, I work with a lot of entrepreneurial um, uh, business women and professional women. Um, I actually also am a, I am, 
I, I am seemingly the therapist that other therapists go to because you know we're all human um and and so what you know one of the things that you know that is the entrepreneurial space is actually quite triggering <laughs> because it will, it will tap into every single doubt lack of self-belief lack of self-worth lack of self-confidence lack of self-esteem shame that you have experienced in your life the entrepreneurial space will trigger that like there's no time. it will open all the cupboards for you all the cupboards i i know i'm sorry to say that oh, it, it opens up and, and every single client every single female client of mine i do occasionally work with some men but every single um female client of mine who is an entrepreneur who is the, in the business world you know as soon as they say you know, they, they say you know i'm moving into my you know and i say to them well where, where are you in your business right now what's happening oh well i'm i'm i've gone through this phase and i'm you know, it's, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to define who I am in my business and, or I'm, I'm now moving into my next level and want to let, level up, but I'm kind of, you know, I don't know whether I can do it because absolutely what happens is that part of you that's still wounded, that part of you that is unhealed, that part of you that needs you to, to turn inwards and provide compassion, love, dignity, and respect for is shouting out going we can't do this you can't do this because no this is not safe and that's that stops women from stepping into their next level because the child part of them and i have i have one here the child, yeah she's always with me um and the child part of you that's unhealed the vulnerable the part of you that's been shut away or the part of you that has driven the response has driven the survival responses because they they haven't they still don't feel safe will drive you to not be able to move further forward um and i get that a lot you know in fact recently one of my clients was like you know i can't i, I, I just feel like i'm stuck i want to i can see the next step but i'm just i can't i can't feel it you know and and she said, and all this, all this stuff is coming back. And I'm like, yeah, because it's never been away. <laughs> you know? It's never been away. It's been part of you. Mm -hmm. But you've been seeking validation and, and hope that they will, you'll feel less wounded by all the things that you're doing externally in relationships and things like that. But actually, it's the relationship with you have with yourself that heals that inner child, that inner wound, that pain. So Helen, I know you are going to be a speaker at the Women Throughout Summit coming up in March. And I'm very excited about your talk, which is rising beyond trauma through self-compassion and self-acceptance. What can people expect um, during your talk? And what was the journey you're taking our audience on? I'm I'm going to take people, women on a journey from the what ifs and the shoulds to a very clear redefining and defining of I am because the what ifs are the what if I was different what if I was not this person what if I what if I fail what if people think what if people find out that I'm not I mean I hear this what if people find out I'm not as good as, as they think I am you know that's all the self-doubt that's the self-criticism so the what ifs and there's different kinds of what ifs, but those are the what ifs that, that generally kind of come around um, for all of us, actually. Let's not, you know, we are we are all human. Um, and But it's the what ifs that stop you. It's the what ifs that make you believe that you can't move any further forward in your career, in your business, in your in your entrepreneurial life, in your in your CEO life. Um, and actually being able to shift the journey that I'll be taking women on is, is being able to shift from the what if to stand confidently and compassionately in the self-acceptance of I am me and defining the me that they actually are rather than the, the me that they have thought they are based on other people's stories of them. Yeah, so powerful. And I'm working with a lot of women through this process and just 
when we accept ourselves, when we do that self-compassion, self-empowerment and shed away the fear, the shame, the guilt and step into our true selves, I feel like this is where all the magic happens, right? Um, so what's life after that, after you have gone through the healing? Um, yeah, what's, what's life after that and what it's like? remembering that healing is a journey it's not a destination because there will always be things that will that will come up in your life that may may trigger that part of you again and that and the healing the healing is actually being able to respond to that not react like i said remember reactions are an impulse response pause respond it they're your choice so you get to choose to respond to those in the way that is healthier for you that is that is much more empowered, much calmer, much more compassionate, courageous, all the things that, you know, that, that I remember, you know, of me when I was a child, and then they were, they were, they were shifted by some, by other people, and then I had to rediscover them. So that your true core self is this calm, confident, courageous, vibrant, energetic, mm. um, empowered, you know, any use any of your own um, <laughs> woman and that that recovered and healing woman is the one that then gets to respond to other challenges and and uh, then isn't overwhelmed by the challenges that that, that happen in life that isn't also carrying around one of the things i'm very clear about i don't feel defined by my my abuse experience I look at her and I have compassion for her and I and I love her and I have a huge amount of dignity and respect for the way that she that she managed to get through but I'm not her you know I get to look after her I get to give her a hug and I get to you know I got to I got to say to her you know you're safe now it's okay and that's what healing and recovery is 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 being able to acknowledge that there will still be parts of you that may you know that may feel shame sometimes but shame on a on a non-toxic level is a normal emotion <laughs> you know there, there's a there's a normal level of it just the same as with guilt um so you know it's the healing and recovery is being able to stand confidently in the true self that you de you define you get to pause and respond to and define um and allow yourself the ability to to respond to the parts of you that that may continue to have some level of triggering but you notice you observe you respond to them and you give them the love and dignity and respect you deserve they deserve as opposed to living or responding or reacting rather in in a survival response so yeah. you get to you get to you get to feel calm <laughs> You know, people say to me, "Gosh, you're incredibly calm." I am. I am usually unfazed by anything, apart from when somebody puts tea in a coffee mug. That's, uh, I have a whole. I have a whole thing about mugs. Um, so, so it's like that's the only thing. Is a, there's a, there's just there's a share. You know, <laughs> there's a share. That's that's when I my husband he just says really, and I'm like. I'm like, just it's just in the wrong mug, you know. That, well, that's I can't cope with it. I can cope with everything. There's one thing I can't cope with. With a lot of things, there is there is actually not. I mean, I I've heard over, you know, I've also experienced, but I've also heard over the years, and been with women through incredibly traumatic experiences, and nothing nothing of that brings me fear. Nothing of that, you know, makes me feel dysregulated. I'm just honoured that you know I can be. I can be the 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 person, the empathic witnesser that helps them to to move forward from that. Um, but you know, yes, put put my put my coffee in the wrong mug, and it's just, <laughs> the world falls apart. I, I literally I go into teenage mode. There's almost a door slamming moment. You know, there's, there's almost that, and that it, you know, I love that part of me. I love that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you're gonna give yourself the I don't know the freedom to have this one thing like okay that's the one thing I'm gonna flip out about <laughs> and and it, you know 
<laughs> I'll go back to the work that I was doing on myself this morning and 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 I wrote it down actually and and it was like my my business re reason for being you know and it's to leave a legacy of freedom for women because we need to have the freedom to be who we actually are not defined by the stories of the past and the impact of those experiences they don't need to they don't need to define you you can be calm and you can have your weird mug moments mm. um, okay. freedom i i love that you know being empowered to be free and whatever the freedom looks like to you to just yeah. be who you meant to be who you are here to be and i i feel like that's true not only self-empowerment but also empowering other people when you know you can come into this space like we've we're creating the space for women to come together and i always say this this is a space for you to be yourself not be judged not be expected to be someone who you're not you don't have to pretend and you can just be yourself and bring what you want to bring to the table and enjoy this whole experience that we create for you. So thank you for sharing that, Helen. It's been a wonderful conversation with you. I wish we could go on, um, but I want to respect the time of our listeners. But if you are listening to this, if you feel really inspired by our conversation with Helen, of course, there will be ways for you to connect with Helen in the show notes. Um, but also do make sure you register your spot for the upcoming Women Thrive Summit. So this is our annual Women Empowerment event that happens every March. And in 2023, it's the 20th to 24th of March. And Helen is one of our amazing speakers for the summit. And I'm sure you'll be enjoying the journey that we take you on. So do make sure you save your spot and share it with someone who may need this event as well. Helen, what is the best way for people to connect with you? If you feel that they inspire perhaps they want to have a discovery call with you or just have a conversation or send you a message how can they do that they, there are so many avenues um <laughs> they can do that i'm um of course my website uh which is going through a redesign at the moment uh the relaunch of that is the 8th of february but at the moment you can still book a, a free call with me via the existing one um and you can find me on instagram helen, helen b ferguson you can find me on facebook as Helen Ferguson and my professional page, Helen Ferguson Therapy, that you can message me there. Um, my DMs are actually always open. That you know, I I don't, uh, you know, I don't say you can't message me. <laughs> no, you put only book a call with me. Um, people can message me there and and email me at Helen at HelenBFerguson.com if you if you want to. Fantastic. I've truly enjoyed connecting with you. It's an honor to have you on this journey um, leading up to the Women Thrive Summit. And thank you for this connection and just the work that you're doing. I know it's so, so important. And hopefully you will support so many more women all around the world to heal their trauma and become their true empowered selves. So thank you so much today. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. All right. Thank you all so much for listening for today's episode. And we look forward to seeing you in another show. Thanks for now. Bye-bye.